Good evening, church family. Uh, thank you for joining us. Welcome to our uh, worship service uh, here at the Holmes Road Church of Christ. Welcome visitors, welcome church members. I'm going to start us out in prayer. And we have a couple of prayer requests. Uh, be praying for uh, Julie's, uh, uh, Cliff's new wife. Uh, Julie's friend, Rosalia, she recently lost her mom to the virus. And also Shannon Martin, a friend of the uh, Craig's, close friend of the Craig's, is dealing with the virus and going in and out of the hospital. So if you would uh, bow your heads in prayer with me. Heavenly Father, we come to you in prayer, again thanking you for being able to worship you in spirit and truth. Lord, we lift up in prayer. Uh, Rosalia, uh, she's lost her mother recently to the virus, Lord. I pray that you comfort and strengthen this woman and her family as they deal with this loss. Lord, also uh, uh, Shannon Martin, who is also suffering from the virus and struggling uh, with uh, repeated hospitalization, Lord, I pray that you heal him quickly, if that be your will, and that he can come uh, be restored to a, a good measure of health. And Lord, also we are so thankful for the good news about uh, Sister Marilyn, uh, where she's uh, hopefully soon to be uh, released from the uh, hospital and, uh, enter, and to enter rehab. Um, we're so thankful for you answering our prayers uh, to restore our sister to a, a good measure of health. health. Lord, you've done that and we are so thankful and Lord, we know there are so many others uh, who are dealing with the uh, trauma and, and tragedies of, uh, of this virus, Lord. I, I pray that your healing hand and the comfort of your Holy Spirit be with them, Lord. And Lord, I also ask that you just bless this service as we uh, go and uh, worship you in spirit and truth and, and song. In Jesus Christ's name I pray, amen. first song will be I'll be listening 988 when the Savior calls I will answer when he calls for me I will hear when the Savior calls I will answer oh, I'll be somewhere listening for my name Oh, I'll be somewhere listening, I'll be somewhere listening, I'll be somewhere listening for my name. Oh, I'll be somewhere listening, I'll be somewhere listening, I'll be somewhere listening for my name. If my heart is right when he calls me, if my heart is right, I will hear if my heart is right when he calls me. Oh, I'll be somewhere listening for my name. Oh, I'll be somewhere listening. I'll be somewhere listening. I'll be somewhere listening for my name. Oh, I'll be somewhere listening. I'll be somewhere listening. I'll be somewhere listening for my name if my robe is white when he calls me if my robe is white, i will hear if my robe is white when he calls me oh i'll be somewhere listening for my name Oh, I'll be somewhere listening, I'll be somewhere listening, I'll be somewhere listening for my name, yes, for my name. Oh, I'll be somewhere listening, I'll be somewhere listening, I'll be somewhere listening for my name. Next song, Lead Me to Calvary, 332, song before the lesson.
King of my life, I crown thee now. Thine shall the glory be, lest I forget thy thorn-crowned brow. Lead me to Calvary, lest I forget Gethsemane. Lest I forget thine agony, lest I forget thy love for me, lead me to Calvary. Show me the tomb where thou was laid, tenderly mourned and wept. Angels in robes of light array guarded thee whilst thou slept, lest I forget Gethsemane, lest I forget thine agony, lest I forget thy love for me. To Calvary. Let me, like Mary, through the gloom come with a gift to thee. Show to me now the empty tomb. Lead me to Calvary. Lest I forget. Gethsemane, lest I forget thine agony, lest I forget thy love for me. Lead me to Calvary. May I be willing, Lord, to bear daily my cross for thee. Even thy cup of grief to share, thou hast borne all for me. Lest I forget Gethsemane, lest I forget thine agony, lest I forget thy love for me. Lead me to Calvary. Amen. Good evening, church. Glad you're here with us uh, this evening to uh, participate in our worship together. Now, uh, normally... Uh, this is the last Sunday night of the month, and here at Holmes Road Church of Christ, we like to get together for singing night. Typically, every last Sunday night of the month is our singing night. And that is a treasured, uh, beloved tradition that we do at Holmes Road Church of Christ. And it's, it's something that we have learned to treasure and love. The last Sunday night of every month, singing night at Holmes Road Church of Christ. And we're supposed to be people who sing. The New Testament Christians are supposed to be singers. In the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verses 19 through 20, it says, Speaking to one another in psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, singing and making melody with your heart to the Lord, always give thanks for all things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to God, even the Father. So we see we're supposed to speak to one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. We're supposed to be lifting our voice in thanksgiving as we sing. And that's what we love to do at Holmes Road on singing night, is to sing and make melody in our hearts to the Lord. Mark 14, 26. Uh, it says, After singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. When Jesus was with his apostles, they were singers. And they sang a hymn together. In Acts 16, 25, 
It says, but about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns of praise to God as the prisoners were listening to them. So even while they're in chains, in prison, they're singing to God. Through time and time and time again, the Old Testament, the New Testament, God's people are singers. <clears throat> and so singing night is a treasured thing that we love. And uh, unfortunately, because of the pandemic, because of COVID-19, we can't be together and sing and honor our tradition of singing night together. We've thought about ways to do it online uh, together, but that's just impossible. Facebook Live has a delay, and there's just no way we could make that happen. But, but still, I wanted to honor singing night in, in some way, and I thought the best way to honor singing night is maybe to just focus on a song and to let you know the history that is behind the song. A song that maybe we have sung uh, your whole life. Probably a song that's very dear to your heart. That maybe you don't know the background to. And so I thought maybe if I would do that. To honor our singing night uh, together. I just thought we would point out a, the background of a song. That we all know and love. <clears throat> and so tonight I just wanted to focus in on the song. Called What a Friend We Have in Jesus. I know that is a very common song that we love to sing. What a friend we have in Jesus. It's a great song. And, and I just wanted to let you know about how that song came to be. I don't know if you have, uh, if you know the background to that song. But the man who wrote the song is named Joseph Scriven. Joseph Scriven was a, was a preacher. He was a minister in the gospel of Christ, and he was deeply in love with his high school sweetheart. Where he grew up, he dated this girl ever since junior high, and they grew up together, boyfriend, girlfriend, and they were deeply in love. And he traveled to another town to go for his college education. And she stayed home in the old hometown, and he went away to college. And... <coughs> And uh, absence did not diminish their commitment and love for one another. They, even though he was away and apart from, by all those miles and distance, he, he still never fell out of love with her and she never with him. And so in 1844, he finally completed his college education. And the plans that they had made together they decided that as soon as he graduated, he would return home and be married. And so he, he, uh, their plan was for, them to, to, for him to come back home and to marry her. And they planned that through letters. You know, they didn't have phones back then in the 1800s. And, and so they just wrote letters back and forth and planned the whole wedding. And as soon as his graduation was over, he was going to go back home and have the wedding. So the day came. He graduated. And when he was ready uh, to go home, he arrived home the day before the wedding. One day before the wedding, he arrived back in his old hometown, ready to meet her. And everything on the journey went well as planned. Scriven left college and traveled home for the wedding, and he couldn't wait to see his bride. He couldn't wait to see her. And so as Scriven was entering the town, his hometown, as he was entering, he went to her house full of excitement. He didn't go to his home. The first thing he did upon arriving at her home was he went to go see her. He hadn't seen her in quite some time, and he hadn't been home in quite some time. And so the excitement was to see his bride. And as the young Irishman Scriven came to her house, he actually came upon a very horrible scene. His beautiful fiance that he had planned to marry the next day was tragically laying under the water in the creek bed by her home after falling off of her horse. She was completely submerged underwater and had passed away. And you can imagine how heartbreaking that would be. And after grieving for some, quite some time, Scriven moved to Canada and eventually picked up the pieces of his life and once again fell in love with another beautiful woman. And once again, he had planned 
a wedding. They planned to get married together. And they selected the date. And they were looking forward to being together in wedded bliss. And two weeks before the wedding, Scriven's fiance became very ill and died just a couple of days before the wedding. For the second time in Scriven's life, he had lost the love of a committed relationship just a day or two before the wedding. And after a year or so of grieving the second loss, Scriven wrote a poem to his mother back in Ireland that described the deep friendship he felt with Jesus that he had cultivated during those hardships in his life. Now, it makes me wonder how I would view God if I had gone under those tragedies. If I had lost two beloved ladies that I was going to marry. If I had to undergo those kinds of tragedies and heartbreak. Would I value, would I, would I look at God and say, man, that's a friend. So it makes me wonder, how would you view God if you had undergone tragedies such as that? Instead of thinking God was punishing him or that God hated him or Scriven, on the other hand, he looked at it and Scriven cherished God's friendship through all the hardships. Scriven saw the tragedies in his life as a way to discover God's friendship. The poem that he wrote to his mother, it was found and published under the original title, Pray Without Ceasing, with an anonymous author. Ten years after the poem was published, Scriven, under a lot of pressure from his friends and family, finally acknowledged that he had written it. And then in 1868, the attorney, Charles Converse, set the poem to music and renamed it, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. And so tonight in our singing night, tonight as we, as we would normally be singing together, I pray that we too, do. I pray we don't have to undergo those kinds of tragedies that Scriven did, but I pray that we will be able to discover God's friendship with us. I pray that each of you will know the friendship with God that awaits you. There are many of you out there that may be out there watching this that you don't feel God's friendship. I pray that you will discover it. Because God, Jesus Christ, is your best friend. He will provide a relationship and a friendship to you like no other. John chapter 15 and verse 14 through 15 says, No longer do I call you servants. Jesus says, I'm not going to call you servants. For the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends. For all that I have heard from my father, I have made known to you. You are my friends if you do what I command you. Jesus says, my friendship is ready for you. In John 15, 13, it says, Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. Jesus died for you. And so we truly have an amazing friend in Jesus Christ. We're going to sing this song together as we uh, enjoy our singing night together. Let's sing this great song. We have, what a friend we have in Jesus. And then we'll have our closing prayer and thoughts. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. Oh, 
forsake thee, take it to the Lord in prayer, in his arms he'll take and shield ye, thou wilt find a soul unto there. Amen, church. Good evening, church family. <clears throat> I want to thank everybody for tuning in this evening and partic or participating in our lesson. We, we're so glad to be able to do this, and we just can't wait to, to get back together with the family. And trust me, we're, we're talking about that and debating about that and trying to come up with ways we can comply with the governor's orders as well as get our family back together so we hope you uh, had an opportunity to view this morning service if you didn't that will be posted on YouTube so that you can see that along with this one we just hope and pray that everybody's staying safe and staying healthy and those that are in need of prayer we just we just hope and pray that uh, you're you're lifting your voice to God and you're asking for prayers and you're asking for help and We'd like to close this service with another song since it is singing night, much like we did this morning. Those of you that uh, didn't see the Facebook post, we'd like to gather around the podium as a family and sing a final song. Till we meet, till we meet, till we meet again. Till we meet, till we meet again. God be with you till we meet again. Till we meet, till we meet again. God be with you till we meet again. Till we meet, till we meet again. God be with you till we meet again. Till we meet, till we meet again. God be with you till
Amen. Amen. Good night, church. Thank you.